Today we're making homemade pita bread and it honestly is pretty easy to make. It's just time consuming. So let me show you guys how I made it. You're gonna begin by mixing together your yeast mixture like normal and you're going to let that rest for 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, we're going to sift in our flour. Next, just throw in the rest of your ingredients and then we're going to get started on kneading our dough. While you're kneading your dough, we're going to pour in a third cup of water and then continue to add a tablespoon of water after that until your dough is nice and soft and pulls away beautifully from the sides of your bowl. I personally added an extra third cup of water and then you wanna add your dough to a lightly floured or oiled bowl and cover for two hours. Two hours later, add your dough to a lightly floured surface and separate into about 10 to 14 dough balls. We're going to let them rest for 20 minutes and then roll them out and let them rest for another 20 minutes. I had my oven preheated to the highest temperature. I threw in my bread and let them bake for about three minutes. And then after those three minutes, it should have a nice color on the other side of your bread. And then you're going to let them bake basically until the other side has a nice color. So about an extra minute or so, but you want to keep your eye on them because it can burn very fast and you're done. These are the most fudgy two layered almond blondies and they are a delight. So let me show you how they're made. To make the blondie layer, start by mixing together melted butter and brown sugar, then add an egg and egg yolk, vanilla, almond extract, salt, and baking powder. Mix these together before adding all-purpose flour and almond flour. Your blondie layer is now ready, so set it aside while we prepare the frangipan. Whip together softened butter and white sugar before adding an egg, vanilla, and almond extract. Finally, add almond flour and a pinch of salt. That is it for the frangipan. See? Not so intimidating. It's time to put everything together. In a parchment lined pan, add all of your blondie dough, spread it even, then do the same to the frangipan on top. You don't have to do this, but you can run a knife or something through the layers to get them to mix a bit. Add slivered almonds on top if you have them, then bake these. Let your frangipan almond blondies cool down before you slice them and add powdered sugar. Enjoy. These chicken pizza cups were so easy to make. Think of a Chicago style deep dish pizza, but in a mini version. Perfect for iftar because let's be real, who can eat a whole slice after fasting for 15 hours? So let me first show you how I made the chicken filling. So just start by sauteing some garlic and adding the diced chicken, some green peppers, then some paprika, oregano, red chili flakes, onion powder, salt and pepper. The measurements are all in the caption. Also add some tomato puree and then cook that for about 10 minutes and then set aside so that it can cool down. You can make your own pizza dough, but I am using ready made shop bought one which is probably why this was so easy to make i cut mine into 12 pieces because that's how big my cupcake tray is and then lay down roughly like i've shown here if your tray is at non-stick might be a good idea to brush with oil first fill with about a tablespoon of the cooled filling and then top with some mozzarella cheese or any cheese of your choice you could actually fill them with anything that you like at this point like pepperoni jalapenos but i just stuck with the cheese and an extra sprinkle of oregano and that's it that was so easy time to bake so you guys love the kanafa slash katefi cookie recipe that I shared with you early on in the series and so today for day 22 of Ramadan recipes I have another super easy dessert recipe for you guys. It's minimal ingredients and it's so so easy so you want to start by adding your ready made custard. I know I normally use everything from scratch but I'm sacrificing my morals for you guys today. So you want to add your custard and then you're going to add in your cocoa powder, heat it up and then when it cools down add your mascarpone. Then you're going to whip your cream to soft peaks and then to layer it you're simply just going to add in some of the muffin crumbled up and then a layer of the chocolate custard and then top it off with that softly whipped cream and then I also grated some chocolate on top where that's optional and then it's literally done. Refrigerate it for a little bit and then you can eat it. Here's how to make a skillet cookie dough. We're going to start off by browning some butter. This really brings out the depth and flavor in your cookie dough. We're going to let that cool and then we're going to add our brown sugar followed by some plain flour, baking soda, baking powder, egg, vanilla essence and give that a really good mix. We're then going to add lots of chunks of milk chocolate and then we're going to transfer that into an oven safe dish. And if you're a chocolate lover just like me, you can sprinkle over more chocolate chips. Bake that in the oven and then top with your favorite vanilla ice cream and drizzle over some caramel sauce. And now all that's left to do is to dig in. This is how easy it is to make these insanely delicious triple chocolate chip muffins. Mix together the sugar and vegetable oil, add in the yogurt, egg and vanilla. To make our cocoa mixture, add in some coffee and warm buttermilk to the cocoa powder. Add the cocoa mixture in and mix very well. Add in half the triple chocolate mix alongside half the dry ingredients and repeat the steps until just combined. You do not want to over mix. Scoop the butter into the muffin cases and add some extra chocolate mix on top to make these stand out even more. Bake in the oven at 220 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes to get a dome and then drop the temperature to 170 for 18 minutes. Minimal effort which is perfect for Ramadan. These are moist, fluffy, delicious and a big family hit. If you like milk cake then you need to try this recipe. Cream together the butter and sugar and add in all the eggs. Then add in your dry ingredients and mix until combined but don't over mix the batter. 
pour into the baking tray and bake at 160 for 30 minutes. Let it cool down and start poking holes with a fork. Combine together normal milk, evaporated milk and condensed milk and whisk together until fully combined. Pour two thirds of this mixture over the cake and allow it to set in the fridge. Make the whipped cream and pipe it on using a 1M piping tip. Decorate the cake using crushed pistachios and edible rose petals. You can then serve the cake and pour over any remaining milk mixture and enjoy. This custard pie is one of my favorite desserts. It's kind of like the clava, but also nothing like it at the same time. Basically, instead of the nut filling in the center, you have a delicious creamy custard. The first thing we're going to do is make our custard. So we're going to crack some eggs into a large bowl and then add some sugar and beat until it turns lighter in color. Then in a pot over medium heat, we're going to add our milk, salt, sugar, vanilla extract, and some fine semolina. We're also going to add some cornstarch to thicken it, then add some butter when you take it off the heat and slowly incorporate it into your egg mixture. Now that the custard is done, we're going to make our simple syrup, which is water, sugar, orange blossom water, a cinnamon stick, and a squeeze of lemon. Now it's time to layer. We're going to do about 9 to 10 layers of phyllo sheets with lots of butter in between, and then add the custard and repeat with the 9 to 10 layers of phyllo with lots of butter in between. We're going to cut into our desired slices and then pop it in the oven to bake until beautifully golden and crispy on top, just like this. Immediately soak it in the syrup and then garnish with some chopped pistachios and dried rose petals. And now all that's left to do is enjoy. It's day 16 of 30 days of Ramadan recipes and for today's recipe, I'm going to be sharing the best suhoor idea that you will ever have. And that is this amazing banana bread recipe. This banana bread is loaded with chocolate chips, which adds that extra sweetness that you need when you get up for suhoor. And it is perfectly balanced flavor of bananas, vanilla, the sugar, and everything else. So let's make this easy banana bread together today. The secret to my banana bread is using brown butter. And then into that brown butter, I like to add both white granulated sugar as well as light brown sugar. I find that that brown butter adds the most amazing extra toffee flavor to banana bread. And then to this, we're going to add our vanilla extract followed by our two whole large eggs. And then just combine everything together until we have a beautiful homogenous mixture. For the star of the show, of course, it is going to be the bananas. And you want to use the bananas that you forgot to use in your fruit salad or in your fruit platter for Ramadan. And now they are brown and wrinkly because these are the perfect bananas for banana bread. And so we're going to smash these bananas and then add all the smashed bananas into our wet batter and just combine everything together. Lastly, for the wet ingredients, we're going to add sour cream, which will keep our banana loaf soft for days. Because trust me, once you make this banana bread, you will want to be enjoying it every single day for suhoor. It is the best banana bread recipe you will ever come across. So definitely make it for you and anyone who you love because it will be a hit, I promise. Now we're just going to add all of our pre-mixed dry ingredients, so our salt, our flour, our leaveners, and now just combine everything together. At this point, you want to make sure you don't over mix. Just combine everything till you have no more streaks of flour. And because this is a chocolate chip banana bread recipe, I'm going to be adding a good amount of chocolate chips into the batter and also sprinkling chocolate chips on top so that they bake wonderfully in the oven along with this loaf. This banana bread does take about an hour to bake, so have some patience, and throughout that hour, you will just be mesmerized at how amazing your house smells. I promise you, this is the most moist, tender, flavorful banana bread recipe you will ever come across. It is just the perfect balance of all the flavors you want in a banana bread. And like I said, it is perfect for suhoor, it is perfect for that afternoon tea snack, and just perfect to enjoy at any time because who said there's a time to enjoy banana bread? Thank you for watching.